the MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. What is up, you guys? The teller. And we got another one coming at you guys. Of course, we had a fight card last night, uh, Wednesday night, and now we got another one that we're looking forward to this upcoming Saturday. We got the uh, the vacant flyweight title. Uh, it's going to be going to be fought over uh, in a rematch with Davison Figueredo and Joseph Benavides. You guys remember how this went the first time? Uh, of course, Figueredo did miss weight, so I guess that's kind of the reason why they're able to throw this fight back together. But you guys know the deal. Joseph Benavides has had many of opportunity to hold gold, so this this has to be his last chance, in my opinion. Um, first and foremost, if you guys could, man, if you could help me out, like this video. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. And, uh, and yet we're going to be sliding through this show. Uh, I'm filming this early Thursday afternoon. Uh, of course, we do have MMA live discussion taking place tonight. And, uh, and we got the, uh, the, the tough, the ultimate fighter winner, uh, Mike Trezano, the lone wolf. He'll be joining the show later tonight. If you guys have any questions for him, uh, you guys can comment here or, you know, join the show later tonight. Uh, this guy's a, a real up and comer. Uh, Tiger Shulman product, who is, uh, I think, a stud of a fighter. So, we're, you know, we're going to see what's going on with, with Mike and his career and where he's at. And, um, yeah, like I said, man, if you guys could subscribe to the channel, if you haven't liked this video, it's it's highly appreciated. Um, you know, and then now, let, let, let's take a look at uh, last night's card. Of course, we had the, the Wednesday night card, Calvin Cater versus Dan Ige. Um, and, and we'll work our way right to the top of this card. Um, you know, Jack Shore, he closed almost as high as a minus 1000. I think I seen on a couple books and, uh, and he looked like it. He went out there and he looked like a minus 1000, uh, Leanna Jojua, one of the many of, of major upsets on the card. A lot of dogs came through. She pulled off a beautiful arm bar. Jared Gordon looked great at the, in, in the, in the weight division. Um, it was kind of a catch weight situation, right? I guess cause well, Chris Fishgold missed weight, but you know, Jared Gordon looked amazing and, um, very, very impressed with Gordon and, and the way he performed last night. Uh, Modestus Bukaskis against my boy Andreas Michalides. You guys know I wasn't happy with that. In my opinion, I had Andreas win in that fight, uh, and he went for a takedown to uh, solidify the round. And uh, in my opinion, got hit with some illegal elbows to the back of the head. It was kind of controversial. Maybe it was, you know, maybe some people thought those were legal. Some of them were definitely legal, you know, no doubt about it. But I think for sure you could have at least saw three, at least three illegal shots to the back of the head. So just really depends how you want to look at that. I don't really like the way they stopped the fight too because. You know, he went to lean up up against the cage, you know, just to, to regain his wits. And it was in between rounds anyway. And they, they opened the door, so he lost his balance. And then the, the referee stopped the fight immediately. I didn't like how that played out. I feel like if it was a more seasoned referee like Herb Dean, he would have took a second, you know, to make a rational decision, talk to the guy, hey, say, hey, what's going on? You know, are you good? You know, you know, obviously the cage was open behind him. See what's going on. But, you know, there was a little bit of a language barrier there, I think, too. I talked to Andreas this morning. Uh, he's good to go. And uh, mark my words, he's going to be getting another major opportunity. He was already scheduled to fight on the Contender Series, and uh, he took this fight on short notice. He's a natural middleweight fighter. Let's not get that twisted, too. Took this fight up at uh, a light heavyweight. So he'll be back. Mark my words. He'll, he will be back. And you guys saw, he looked good in the beginning of that fight. Um, he kind of has a wild striking stance, uh, wild striking style, but he's dangerous. You know, nice calf kicks were thrown. He'll be back, man. Uh, Lee Rowan, Mor Lee Rowan Murphy with another upset in the card against Ricardo Ramos. He looked good, man. This guy is actually a, a serious fighter here. This guy, Murphy, people keep sleeping on him. Uh, Kamzat Kim Kamiev, uh, destroyed John Phillips. Uh, that this guy is the truth, huh? Uh, got this, the Darsh choke there early in the second round. Uh, my, my, Lazez looked very good against Abdul Razak Al Hassan. Uh, another major upset on the card. That was the fight of the night, in my opinion. And pretty much everyone agreed in the fight campaign. That was the fight of the night. Um, you know, that, or maybe the main event, but Santos looked good. Molly McCann did not show up. A lot of people were on McCann, including myself. Uh, McCann did not show up. Uh, Stamen did not show up as either. Jimmy Rivera definitely showed up. Props to Jimmy Rivera still doing his thing. Tim Elliott, that was a close fight in my opinion against Ryan uh, Benoit. Benoit had that fight in the bag if he would have stepped it up a little bit and he was just on cruise control and uh, he blew the fight in my opinion. Kadar, Calvin Kadar looked amazing in this fight. Um, you know, he really started to uh, just get better and better in there every round. And this is a guy, man, when he's fighting in, in main event fights and title fights that are five rounders, he's going to be a true threat to everybody. 
Uh, I mean, even if, even if it's a three round fight, he's obviously still a threat, but I really like the pace that he pushes and the accuracy on his jab and whatnot. And uh, I want to see him matched up against somebody maybe like Max Holloway. What do you guys think for Cater next? I, I would like to see him matched up against Max Holloway. That's We were talking about it last night in the Fight Companion. Um, and again, shout out to everybody that joined the Fight Companion. If you guys didn't join, man, you guys missed out. It's a great way to watch the fights. We're going to be doing another one for this card that we're breaking down, the Saturday events, Saturday's card. So for the main card, join us. And uh, yeah, that pretty much sums up Wednesday night's card. Now we take a look at the card taking place this Saturday. Uh, you know, the vacant flyweight title. Is going to is going to be up for grabs. Jack Hermanson versus Kelvin Gastelum, Dia Casey. And we got some some decently entertaining fights here. Not the biggest of names, but some young guys. Man, Grant Dawson, Davi Ramos, Armand Sarukian. Some some you know some hot fighters right here, man. Montel Jackson, Brett Johns, jo Joe Duffy. So we're going to be getting into all this, um, all these fights here. Take a look at the lines. Uh, you know, I see some spots. I see some really solid spots. I already have two plays that, that I'm pretty much locking in here. I'm going to be finalizing my write-ups. So I'm going to be getting them out to you guys. Two plays I feel very, very confident about. And uh, one play in particular, I talked about it last night. It's, it might be a max max play, man. Uh, I'm talking about an eight-unit play. Uh, I'm contemplating if I'm going to go seven, eight units on it. And I'm going big on this fight. I, I really feel great about it. So, um for those of you guys that are interested, you guys know the deal. You can reach out to me. But this is a money spot right here. This card, we got a, a spot to make some real money. And, uh, and and with that all being said, let's get right into this card. In the first fight of the card, we got Sergey Spivak taking on Carlos Felipe, the uh, the newcomer who's undefeated, 8-0, the Brazilian fighter. Uh, this guy, you know, definitely seems to be uh, more striking based. This guy has, has had some professional boxing bouts, 8-0. Uh, and um, you know, not a lot of finishes necessarily, but as you see here, he's, he's had a professional boxing bout. I mean, this guy likes to box. You look at him on tape, you know, he has decent hands. Uh, he's a big boy. He's only 25 years old. And uh, and then he's taking on Sergey Spivak. You know, Sergey Spivak, the polar bear. Uh, this guy, you know, he, he entered the UFC. Uh, I believe he was undefeated at the time. Or he only had, yeah, he was undefeated with his mixed martial arts career. That's right. And uh, only... Then he had a fight against Walt Harris, so uh, you know he quickly had a little tarnish on his resume. But Walt Harris, that's what he's known for doing, right? He'll go in there and he'll shut your lights off in the first round. Uh, the tie to Avasa fight, he looked good in that fight. Ended up pulling off that arm triangle choke. Uh, you know he definitely showed to be a seasoned fighter who has some solid grappling behind him. He's a big boy. If he gets a hold of you, you know he, he has some decent power chokes. He could try to arm triangle choke you, stuff like that. Maybe he has some guillotines in his arsenal too. But tie to Avasa is a guy. <laughs> really, he's been having trouble even pulling off a victory in the octagon. Um, really needs to work on his diet, nutrition, in my opinion. He's too busy drinking beers out, out of shoes and whatnot. And it really doesn't <clears throat> it doesn't help the cardio, uh, as you guys see. And then uh, Marcin Tybura, you know, he just went out there and beat him. And, and that was a fight that was kind of a lackluster type of fight. But Tybura just had another victory that was a, a lackluster performance. That's what seems to be what Tybura has been up to as of recently. So whatever. Um, now he's taking out Carlos Felipe. The newcomer. Um, take a look at the line here. You know, Sergey Spivak right around minus 150. The newcomer right around plus 130. And um, yeah, I think Spivak's route to victory here is to to drown Felipe a little bit. You know, lean on him, push him up against the ca the cage, maybe get some takedowns. And uh, you know, I think that would definitely be his route to win the fight. Looks to be in great shape going into this fight. Uh, you know, it looks looks pretty good here in my opinion. And um, I don't know if that's his daughter or if that's his, his girl. But Sergey Spivak, this guy's a tough dude, man. Oh, I think that's his girlfriend. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take Sergey Spivak to win the fight. Here's the uh, the new the newcomer here. He's a big boy, man. Not not that tall, only six foot one, but you know, he's a he's a wide dude. Doesn't look to be in great shape. You know, he's not ripped up or nothing like that, but decent hands. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to be picking him in his UFC debut. I think this is a this is a step up in competition for him. And uh, I'm going to give the the nod to uh, Sergey. I'm going to lean Sergey Spivak. Somebody was really upset with me in my last breakdown video for uh, sipping my my tea over here too close to the mic. So I'll make sure I don't do that to you guys this time. Sorry about that, brother. I know that really upset you. So I don't want to I don't want to do it. Sipping on some uh, some green tea, a little bit of caffeine with some lemon and honey. 
I guess that, that boosts the immune system a little bit, but regardless, I'm taking my vitamins and I'm drinking two big glasses of orange juice a day. So I don't know what that little bit of lemon juice does too, but can't hurt. Uh, how about this next fight? I'm a little surprised that this fight is uh, so early on the card, at least as of now. Davi Ramos taking on Arma Armand Sarukian, a guy that I'm very high on. You guys remember I had a major play in Armand, um, you know, not too long ago. Um, and time has been flying, but it was um, against, uh, yeah, Olivier Alban Mercier had a major play on him. I think it was a 4.5 unit play um, back at UFC 240. And, uh, and he pulled through in that fight. He looked good in that fight. It actually played out a little bit closer than I thought it would, to be honest. But um, he looked amazing in his debut against Islam Makachev. You guys know Islam is absolutely no joke. Islam actually has a victory against uh, both these guys, Davi Ramos as well. I believe that was Dami Ra Dami Davi Ramos's last loss as well, I believe. Yeah, it was. And then he had a grappling match against Gary Tonin. If you guys aren't familiar with Gary Tonin, Gary Tonin is one of the best BJJ practitioners in the game. Um, but do not sleep on this guy, Davi Ramos. Davi Ramos, uh, you see him, you know, before that loss against Islam was on a four fight win streak. Uh, not the biggest of names, but Austin Hu Hubert looked pretty good in his last fight. But the way that Davi Ramos fights, man, I, I like it. A very, very high caliber grappler, uh, but also has power in his striking and in his hands. I think he can go out there and take anybody out in any given day. Uh, Armand Sarukian, though, this guy's young, he's hungry, and he's a very high caliber type of fighter. Uh, I know he's put in some time at American Top Team, I believe. Uh, also, Tiger Muay Thai doesn't have Top Team listed here, but I think he did do a little bit of training at Top Team. Um, and I think that the, the sky is the limit for this kid. 23 years old, are you kidding me? And, and if you want to watch a high caliber grappling mixed martial arts fight, run the tape back on that Islam Makachev fight. Uh, it was extremely high caliber. I mean, they were just back and forth. Islam, you know, a little bit older, a little bit more polished. It was also a little bit bigger in there too. And uh, he ended up edging the decision. That was a fight that I think Sarukian took on short notice as well. Um, so, you know, keep keep that in mind. You know, but this guy's the real deal, man. Striking's there too. Technical on the feet. And like I said, the sky is the limit. If he gets a victory over Davi Ramos here, that's going to be major for him at the, at the age that he is. You know, and I'm a little surprised that they're throwing him to the Wolves the way they are. You know, throwing him to Islam Makachev. I guess they needed someone to, uh, to hop in that fight. But OAM, a seasoned vet, but... I guess they're not so high on him, but now Davi Ramos, this guy Davi Ramos, don't sleep on him. Davi Ramos is legit, man. This guy is a, he's a very fit guy too, man. This guy comes in, he's a big dude that's ripped, great shape and very technical. Like I said, has a major BJJ background, but very good power in his hands and the striking too. So you don't want to get tagged by this guy. Um, I'm going to go with Armand Sarukian. Uh, this guy, Armand Saruki, we talk about being fit too. This guy is, is very fit. This guy is very professional. And this guy, like I said, I'll say it again. This guy, you know, the sky is the limit with this kid. He, this guy could be holding gold one day. Look at, look at these studs right here, man. Two of the best in the game. This guy's a champion now. I was going to say two guys on the rise, but he's at the pinnacle of the division. And uh, this guy's, you know, working towards the, the pinnacle of his division as well. So, um, yeah, I'm very, very excited for this fight in the lightweight division i don't know if he ever if he stays at this weight class for good man at the, in the lightweight division i wonder if he ever goes down to featherweight but i think you know it's not broken so don't fix it but you know i have sometimes i wonder if he's a little bit undersized if he can make featherweight but uh i'll take armand saruki in to win this fight all right Oh, excuse me here. Sorry about that, guys. Moving on to the next fight. We got Malcolm Gordon taking on Amir Albazi. We got a flyweight bout here. Two guys making their debuts. Uh, this guy Amir look, looks pretty good on tape. <coughs> looks pretty good on tape. Excuse me. Twelve and one, fighting with uh, London Shoot Fighters. Tough little gym over there, and. Um, Pulling off key locks, rear naked chokes, Kimuras, rear naked chokes, elbow. I and mean, this guy finishes fights, right? He's been looking pretty good. The level of competition, you know, not the greatest level uh, of competition. Uh, you know, that this was a, a good fight for him, even though he lost. But, I mean, that's a high caliber opponent. Jose uh, Shorty Torres, guy's a, a stud of a fighter. And, uh, you know, he came up short in that fight, but didn't look horrible in it. Went to decision. Uh, bounced back with the victory. Then this guy, Malcolm Gordon. 
Uh, this guy is actually a pretty good submission artist as well. A lot of submissions, as you guys see here. Um, I, I was watching some of the tape of this guy pulling off some pretty impressive submissions and, uh, and has the ability to uh, finish it as well, you know, with the striking. So, um, you know, I think this is going to be a very entertaining fight. I think this this fight right here has the makings to be fight of the night. Two guys trying to make a name for themselves. And um, I, I've been back and forth on this. I think this fight is... Um, you know, I don't know if the line is necessarily accurate in my opinion. Uh, I do, I do edge Amir to win the fight, but minus one eighty may be a little bit high. But uh, he's also looked impressive. See a little bit of money coming in on Malcolm too. This guy Malcolm's capable. So, <clears throat> as you guys saw last night, a lot of dogs coming through in some of these smaller events, and uh, got to wonder on that line. But I'm, st I'm still going to edge Amir to win this fight. Uh, I do feel like he's a little bit more of, of uh, the complete fighter, um, and I like what he brings to the table. So stay tuned and see how that fight goes. This is a cool one here. We got Brett Johns taking on Montel Jackson. Uh, Montel Jackson is a guy, you know, he, he's really, really been developing his game over the years. He's a natural athlete. This guy has the, the same size hands as uh, Francis Ngannou, which is, is pretty crazy, um, but only has 10 professional fights. Compared to Brett Johns' 18 professional fights. <clears throat> and Brett Johns looked very good um, in his last match. Uh, I believe he was the dog going into that fight against uh, Tony Gravely. Tony Gravely is a guy that a lot of people were high on after the Contender Series fight that he had. This guy has a strong bo boxing background, strong wrestling background. And uh, it was a very competitive fight. But Brett Johns' is grappling really, really looks to be... Um, to be polishing up very nicely for the division. This guy is a, a stud of a, a grappler. We've seen him pull off all types of wild submissions in the octagon too, right? Uh, the calf slicer on Joe Soto. Uh, Joe Soto. The only two losses he had too as of recently were against top level competition, Pedro Munoz and Aljamain Sterling. So, you know, this guy is a very capable fighter. Montel Jackson, on the other hand, uh, let's not forget when Montel Jackson put the beating down on Brian Kelleher. I know a lot of you guys want to see that fight happen. So you guys got to reach out to the matchmakers, man. You guys got to reach out to Sean Shelby, Mick Maynard. If you want to see the teller take on Kelleher, and the money's got to be right too. The money's got to be right. But uh, Montel Jackson, you know, that this is probably how the fight would take place if I took on Kelleher. Probably wrap up the Dars on him or, or the guillotine. Uh, you know, maybe finish him on the feet, you know, um, but you know, you guys got to talk to the matchmakers to get that fight made, but nevertheless, uh, Montel Jackson, this guy is a, is a, a stud of a fighter. This is the type of guy that the more he polishes up his skills, I really think he's a natural athlete. You know, we've seen him in positions before where, you know, he's, he's has his, uh, his back taken by Ricky Simone and, um, and literally has him flattened out and, and he just gets up and stands up and just like flings him off his back, man, shakes him off. You see him do certain things that you don't see a lot of fighters do. I think his striking is, is very is very good. It's getting better and better. He's dangerous with the striking. Uh, he's becoming more and more technical on the feet as well. Uh, looked looked amazing in all these fights, man. Beat the crap out of Andre Sukumtat. Uh, poor, poor Andre. That was actually like a max play for me. Um, funny story, man. A lot of you guys probably know this, but I bumped into Andre Sukumtat on the beach down over here in South Florida. I went to say what's up to the guy. And he said, I know who you are. He knew who I was, I guess, from my show. And uh, I guess he wasn't, I don't know if he was happy or whatnot. He didn't, I don't know. He was kind of friendly, whatever. But um, I guess anyone really wouldn't like that. I guess, you know, I picked against him. I had a max unit. I, I put a red. Back in the day, I used to label my picks how hot they were. And it was a super hot pick that he was going to whoop up Sukumtat. And he really did, though. You know, what, what can I say? He beat, he beat him up pretty good. Uh, Felipe Colares, he looked good in that fight. And, and the Ricky Simone fight was very, very close. And, you know, he was very green back then, 2018. This guy's growing in front of our eyes. Um, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick, um, yeah, I'm going to pick Jackson to win the fight. I like Jackson here. Take a look at the line. Let's see. Right around a minus 200 right now. So this line has fluctuated too. Um, he started off right around minus 300 and it's dropped a lot. So people are actually putting a lot of money on Brett Johns. They feel like he's a little bit more of a seasoned fighter. So yeah, an interesting fight. We'll see how that goes. All right. Oh, up next, we got Joe Duffy taking on Joel Alvarez. Alvarez coming off a solid victory. I believe he was the dog in that fight against Bellardo, the Italian fighter. And, uh, you know, this guy Alvarez is more of a grappling-based fighter, I, I believe. Um, 
Yeah, a lot of submissions on the resume. Fighting out of Spain. Looked good in that Danilo Bellardo fight. It was an Italian and a Spaniard fight. It was a good good prospect fight. You know, he he was uh, the, the, the victor there. And now he's going on to fight a guy in Joe Duffy that has a big name. Joe Duffy, for those of you guys that don't, that don't realize, I believe Joe Duffy was the first guy to ever defeat Conor McGregor. Uh, I'm going to pull that up real quick. I know McGregor had two losses. I think he Duffy was the first loss. Uh, that McGregor ever had, and he pulled off a beautiful submission on McGregor. McGregor's submission skills. Look at the stud over there, McGregor. Just had his birthday. When are we going to see him back? Who's he going to be fighting? Stay tuned to see. Um, okay, no, so he already lost to uh, Artem Sentinkov. And then Joe Duffy. These were both submissions too, submission losses. But Duffy, Duffy has a boxing background. He has submission skills. Uh, you know, I was very high on Joe Duffy, man, back in the day. This was a guy that I thought was very well rounded. Uh, I thought back in the day when he was when he was back in, when he made it to the octagon, I thought that he really messed up by not being more vocal. You know, talking crap about he was a guy that took out Conor McGregor. You know, you saw the different routes that their careers went. Not not to say they're on the same level anyway, but still, you know, this guy is very 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 quiet. He's a very calm type of dude, and I don't really think that does wonders for your career and for your for your pockets. But you know, besides all that, I'll say this much too. I think he's a very skilled fighter. I think, like I said, he has the boxing background, the jujitsu background. He's traded with some of the best camps, TriStar. Uh, you know, he's putting a lot of a lot of time with with some of the best guys. But um, you know, he's also losing to guys like James Vick and Mark Dia Casey in his last two fights. So, you know, that's not a good look. You know, the Dustin Poirier loss we could deal with, but th these two losses are very questionable. Um, but, you know, now he's taking on, yeah, Joel Alvarez. This is a, a big step down in competition, in my opinion. And uh, I'm definitely going to go with Joe Duffy. The line's a little crazy, though. But I get it. I get it, especially stylistically, because Joe Duffy has the submission skills to really avoid any any danger from Alvarez, in my opinion. And then Duffy should be able to uh, to outwork him on the feet. So definitely going to go with Duffy here. It's a high line, though. It'll be nice to see Duffy get a victory. 32 years old. If he's going to do something, he needs to start start making a push now, man. Maybe uh start flapping his gums a little bit too after he gets the victory. See him pulling off the submission here. There's Connie Mack. Look at Connie Mack. <laughs> That's a good fight too. All right. It's a cool fight right here. Looks to be a catchweight fight, huh? Is this fight going to be taking place at 150 pounds? I don't know about that. Um, but Grant Dawson, you guys know the deal with Grant Dawson. This is a guy I've been hyping up for a while. I've had money on him a lot of, in a lot of spots. I think this guy is a true stud. Uh, trained by James Krause. James Krause, you know we've had on the show, MMA Live discussion. And um, again, shout out, man. Tonight, Mike Trezano, Trezano joining the show tonight, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. But Grant Dawson being trained by a guy like like James Krause. James Krause is a technician. This guy, Grant Dawson, already has an amazing wrestling background, uh, background, and he, he pushes a crazy pace. And uh, Nad Naramani also has the, the wrestling background. This guy is an, a very a very strong grappler as well. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup. I think that the UFC brass wants to see how Grant Dawson is going to match up against a fighter when he can't just get takedowns and smother him, even though maybe he does do that to Nad. But on paper, you know, this guy, Nad Naramani, is a very strong grappler too. So, you know, it might not be that easy to go do that. Nad Niramani put in time with Team Alpha Male, uh, fighting out of England too. Um, this guy, he's a, he's a good fighter. If you remember his one fight that was against um, a guy that's an absolute killer now too, Khalid, Khalid Taha. That was a very, very close fight. Taha just could not stuff the takedowns, but as soon as he got back up to the feet, he was winning the striking exchanges. Uh, but you really just saw that, that uh, you know, Taha didn't have the, the takedown abilities, takedown defense abilities to, to stuff Naramani and, and Naramani has some strong, strong wrestling. He's going to be in your face. You know, he's pushing his nose, uh, pushing his forehead against your nose, just grinding you. It's going to be really interesting to see how these guys match up. I, I have to say that Dawson still puts a higher pace on Naramani. Even if Naramani is able to stuff some takedowns early, I still see Dawson pushing, pushing away a uh, better pace, you know, having more cardio, more gas in the tank in the later rounds. And then Dawson's also working on his striking too. And he kind of just has that X factor. Dawson's, you know, he's a, he's, look at him over here. He's even working as a coach a little bit. This was, with, this was with Timbo. I believe this was from last night, 10 hours ago. Yeah. So, I mean, he's already out there. You see Gina Mazzani, 
That's uh, Timbo's girl. All these, these are all UFC fighters right here. Every single one of these guys, guys and girls. And they're good at what they do, man. Very cerebral. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Dawson to win the fight. Um, there was Nad Naramani and Khalid Taha. That was, a, that was a, an entertaining fight. But the takedowns really saved him. Um, and then Nad Naramani. Yeah, he just lost to Mike Grundy. Mike Grundy, that was a fight that he got finished on the feet, but I believe it was on the feet. But Mike Grundy, keep an eye on this guy, Mike Grundy. A spectacular wrestler himself, fighting out of England, which you don't normally see. But a very tough wrestler with some power in his hands. But yeah, gotta go, gotta go, Grand Dawson here. All right. Yeah, and this one we got a UFC newcomer, Roman Dallas, the Georgian fighter, fighting out of Ukraine now. But uh, his nationality is Georgia. Those guys are very tough. Then you got the Russian fighter. You guys, you know they're tough too. But this guy Kadis Abragimov is uh, has not been that impressive in my opinion. I have not been impressed with him in the least bit. Coming over from M1 Global, he's only 25 years old, but. Two losses against Da Unjung and Ed Herman. Those are fights, man. You, you got to be able to win those fights. And the, and the standing guillotine that Jung had on him was was really not a good look for him at all. And now this guy Roman. This guy Roman has very good striking. This guy looks to be a, you know, a power puncher. Has, has a, a striking base. And uh, he's been knocking dudes out left and right. Looks spinning back fist punches, all types of stuff. Um, you see him hitting the pads here. Nothing flashy, but the guy has power in his hands. If you watch him on tape, he has power in his hands. So I expect him to have the edge on the feet, and um, I expect him to win this fight. I, I, I think he wins this fight here. Um, you know, now his opponent, like we talked about, have been overly impressed with Kadis, but um, very young, only 25 years old. So, you know, maybe he, he's back to the grind, you know, and and um, maybe he looks better in this fight than we've seen him in the past. You can get him at around plus 160 odds, but I'm not feeling it. So yeah, I'm gonna take the, the the newcomer, man. It's got Roman Dalish. All right, we slide through. We got a we got a good matchup here, man. A lot of flyway bouts have been taking place over the last couple of cards. So the division's young. It's it's healthy. It's thriving. Anytime Alexandra Pantoja is fighting, it's a good fight. Taking on Askar Askarov, who his fights have been very entertaining as well. Dude's a, he's a tough dude, this guy, you know, um, one of his, uh, very entertaining fights was against Brendan Moreno. I don't know if you guys remember that went to a draw split decision draw and I actually had money on him that night. And that was a close fight. And then, uh, took out Tim Elliott in his last fight, Tim Elliott, you know, had a victory victory last night. And, um, but now he's taking on Alexandra Pantoja. I think Pantoja is on a different level than Elliot. I will say this, Brandon Moreno has really came around. So that that is, a, you know, he's been tested in the octagon already. That's for sure. You know, since coming over from ACB. Because Moreno's, he's at the top of the division. But, uh, you know, Pantoja, in my opinion, when he puts it together, between, between his striking and his jiu-jitsu, you know, this guy is a nasty fighter. Nasty fighter. Coming off a victory against Matt Schnell. You guys know I'm very high on Matt Schnell. I like what Matt Schnell brings to the table. So... You know, that, that's a feather in his cap right there. Taking out guys like Wilson Hayes, Oko Sasaki, the, uh, the very tall Japanese flyweight fighter. Uh, Brandon Moreno, we we're just talking about him. Uh, this is back when Moreno was a little bit more green a couple years ago. But um, yeah, man, I, I'm, a, I'm definitely going to go with Pantoja. I'm a fan of his. Uh, take, a look about, took a lake, take a look at the line right around minus 200. And, uh, you know, could be a little bit dangerous depending. This guy, Asker, is definitely capable. So... Um, there was Asker and Timbo throwing down, you know, yeah, he actually dropped him. I don't know if you guys can see that if I'm, I don't know if I'm blocking you guys there, but yeah, he dropped Timbo. He almost finished the fight. Let's not forget that too. That the fight was almost stopped with his hands. So the boxing's there. He has some power in his hands. He's a tough dude. He could spoil your guys party. I'm telling you right now, there's potential for him to spoil the party. But at the same time, I like Pantoja a lot too. And I'm picking Pantoja to win the fight. All right, we got a good one up here coming up next. A lot of you guys were talking about this fight last night. A lot of you are interested to see this guy, this girl, Ariane Lipsky. Look at Ariane Lipsky right there. It looks like she's ready to go. Odds are near even. Taking out Lu Luana Carolina. Uh, she didn't look that bad in her last fight. Six and one now. Uh, yeah, she beat Priscilla Cachoeira, which is not really 
you know, the most formidable opponent. She's she, she's tough. She's a tough chick, but she loses to everybody. And uh, she almost got killed, I, I believe, by Shevchenko, right? Didn't Shevchenko almost kill her in the octagon? What was that? Yeah, Valentina Shevchenko. She finally finished her in the second round. That fight should have been stopped earlier. That was a devastating fight, but she bounced back with the victory against Shayna Dobson there. Good for her. Um, but back to the fight. Um, you know, taking out a girl like Priscilla Cachoeira, she went to decision. Uh, she's decently athletic. She kind of reminds me of a female Anderson Silva. She kind of reminds me of her. She looks like her a little bit. You know, decent frame for the weight class. You know, nice reach, uh, you know, for the weight class. Um, Ariane Lipsky has the Muay Thai background. The violence queen, 26 years old. And, uh, and she lost to Molly McCann and Joanne Calderwood as of recently, so... Molly McCann, man, that hype train got de derailed last night, as you guys know. You see Lipsky here looking good at the weigh-ins. Uh, you know, I tell you, it's, it'll be a, it'll be nice to watch Ariane Lipsky throw down tomorrow night. Uh, odds, yeah, a little bit of money coming in on Lipsky. I, I slightly edge Lipsky. I think the fight is very close, though. It's a very close fight. The line's pretty accurate. I, I like Lipsky, though. Um, Luana can throw down on the feet as well, too. It's probably how the fight's going to take place. going to be a, probably a striking match, and uh, I'll edge Lipsky to win the fight. All right. Let's see. All right, we're creeping our way up to the uh, the top three fights here. We got Mark Dia Casey taking on Rafael Faziv. Dia Casey, man. So Dia Casey, I don't know if you guys remember, like four years ago, three four years ago, this guy was one of the most highly highly touted prospects in the game. People had him. They had him ranked as one of the, the top up and comers. A lot of people had big, big expectations for him. That train got completely derailed. Uh, you take a look at the way, and this was against uh, Nazareth. Nazareth hap crossed, and um, you know he tried to punk him out at the weigh-ins, and, and that was not happening, man. He was laughing. He knew what was up, and he went out there and he whooped up Mark Dia Casey. Now Mark Dia Casey had already lost two fights before this as well, um, so I mean his train was already kind of falling off the tracks but uh he, who did he lose to again he lost to uh, yeah dan hooker and jacar close the close fight close just hurt his leg and then pushed him up against the cage for the majority of that fight dan hooker is just a stud you guys know that so uh then he bounces back with two victories against joe duffy and lando venata looked very good on both those fights it looked like he started to put it together he's been putting a lot of work over in an american top team and uh if he can he's still young so if he can still you know mentally uh, figure it out and he has the skills he could definitely still give a lot of guys problems uh, this guy Rafael Faziv uh, one of the last fights I remember watching him fight uh, it was uh, was the first fight of the night I was washing up real quick before I ran out here to watch the fights I had the fights on my phone in the shower and uh, right as soon as the fight started man he got finished and he was the favorite going into that fight too he was undefeated at the time and um, but it, people realize now his opponent Magomed Mustafayev is a tough guy too but um Take a look real quick at what Fazid has been doing. And yeah, he bounced back with the victory against Alex White. Alex White's not really UFC caliber, in my opinion. He was a tough dude, but he's really not on the level, Alex White. We, I don't think he's in the UFC as we speak. I'm take a look at Alex White real quick, but 13 and 6. I mean, yeah, he won one of his last four fights. But against Dan, the hitman Moret. But Rafael Faziv, man, very, very good striker. This is a dangerous fight, in my opinion. Uh, take a look at the odds. People, you know, they, they're edging Dia Casey a little bit. I get it. Dia Casey's quick, he's athletic, and he's been looking good as of recently. I'm going to pick Dia Casey to win the fight as well, but Faziv definitely has potential to uh, spoil the party. I could see this fight taking place on the feet, being a, a very entertaining striking match. But I'll take Dia, Dia Casey to win the fight. Oh, Alex White. Another Spartan. A lot of Spartans out there. All right. Creeping up to the co-main event. This one should be a good fight. These last two fights are these are high-caliber level fights, man. These are some of the best fighters in the world, so don't get it twisted. Um, Jack Hermanson taking on Kelvin Gaslam. I think this is an amazing fight. You see uh, Hermanson coming in with a, a what, like a... 10, 11, yeah, like a three inch, a three inch height advantage, uh, about what, six inch reach advantage, fighting out of the Frontline Academy, 32 years old, really still in his prime, you can get him at about even odds right now, uh, he's coming off a tough loss, right, 
the Joker, who was really hot, and then he got derailed by Jared Cannonier. If he didn't lose that fight, I mean, you know, he'd be really, really getting a, a big time fight. Probably potentially, be, you know, be fighting for the belt and whatnot. I saw that Jacare Souza fight. I saw that live down over here in South Florida. He showed up. I had him to win that fight. He was a dog. Picked him all day in that fight. Made some money on it too. He was a pretty good dog in that fight, I believe, if I remember correctly. And um, you know, Hermanson when he puts it together, man, he's uh he's quick. He's athletic. He's a big dude. And he's well-rounded, very strong grappling, very underrated grappling, you know, fighting out of Europe and whatnot. But, you know, he he has his own type of grappling style that if he gets on top of you, he rains some nasty ground and pound. He could he could hit you with the guillotine. We see him choking out guys, Brazilian black belts, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts, and guys like David Branch, Mearshart, an excellent jiu-jitsu practitioner, Talis Latis, uh, uh, he was really on fire around this time too, uh, Brazilian black belt, excuse me, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, um, fighter as well and he finished him not with the submission but still took him to the mat and beat him up bad he wasn't scared to go to the ground and uh, now he's taking on kelvin gaslam gaslam obviously he has the wrestling background but gaslam's bread and butter is his striking uh, we talked about it last night i had gaslam winning that last fight against darren till i thought that was a robbery in my opinion um split decision loss there for him but uh, as far as i'm concerned he would he should have won that fight and then the israel adesanya fight was what almost fight of the year, one of the best fights we've ever seen. And Israel Adesanya is, is a stud of a fighter. He's a champ. And that fight was a very, very closely contested match. It came down to the fifth round. That fight did come down to the fifth round. It was not even a question. Sorry if you heard that little tea sip to that one guy who was making that comment, but you're going to have to live with that one. And uh, yeah, but you know, so... That could be potentially a victory, and that fight was an epic fight. It came down to the fifth and final round. So, you know, I, I do hold Gaslam very high. Uh, I hold him very high, man. The guy is a, a very skilled fighter. And, you know, he's going to be undersized here like he, he pretty much always is, right? He's always undersized, but he's so technical with the striking. Sometimes I wonder if, if his mind's completely in the, in the fight game. I know a lot of people talk about how he smokes a lot, which there's nothing wrong with that, but he seems like a very easygoing type of guy. Sometimes I wonder if he really was committed to the diet and went down to welterweight if he would be a champion down there. But, you know, he's, he settled in at, at the uh, middleweight division. And let's take a look at the line real quick. It's, it's pretty much pick him at this point. I got to go with Gaslam, in my opinion. I, I just think Gaslam's a little bit more battle-tested against higher caliber opponents. Um, you know, did lose to Weidman, but, you know, these are some excellent fights here. Took out Vitor Belfort. That was a, a bullcrap, no contest. It was, I think it might have been due, due to marijuana, but, you know, taking out guys like Johnny Hendricks, Tim Kennedy, Vitor Belfort, Bisping, Souza, uh, Darren Till, you know, almost kind of, sort of, close fight. And then the Adesanya fight was epic. I'm going to go with Gaslam here. If that changes, I'll update you guys ASAP, but I, I got to go with Gaslam here in this spot. Herman Hermanson's, a, you know, he's a skilled dude too, man, but... Uh, something just tells me Gaslam's going to be a little bit more game in there. Yeah, I'm going to go with Gaslam to win the fight. Making that, that pick here live. I've been back and forth a little bit. But uh, I got to go with Gaslam. Looks like Gaslam is ready to go. <laughs> Rocking some of the gear out there. Training with one of the uh, the best striking coaches in the game over there at Kings MMA, Rafael Cordero. Stud of a, of a coach. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if Gaslam gets a knockout. I would never be surprised if Gaslam gets a knockout. Beautiful boxing. Getting some golf in. So, yeah, we'll go with Gaslam to win the fight. All right. We made it to the main event, boys. Appreciate all you guys that stuck around throughout this entire breakdown. Uh, of course, I'm always putting the timestamps for you guys, but I appreciate that, you know, those of you guys that really watch these videos try to make them entertaining for you and uh, I try to make them uh, you know where you guys are I try to make them informational where you guys are really getting some some information that you guys can use to help you guys make your decisions on what bets you guys want to want to want to do and um, this is a, an excellent fight here Davison Figueroa taking on Joseph Benavidez his nickname I guess is the beefcake now I know at one time it was uh, Joe B1 Kenobi or something or jo Joe B Joe B1 and I've been watching him way back since the WEC days. He's been bringing it from way back then. I don't know if you could see him, him over here. 
uh, Megan O'Leary and him. It's funny they're married now, I think, but you know Megan O'Leary was way, you know always a a uh, an interviewer type person. You know one of the media people from way back in the day. She knows her stuff. Shout out to Megan O'Leary. A lot of people like her. A lot of people are into Megan O'Leary. Not really my style, but uh, if you like, if you're into that type of look. Megan O'Leary knows her stuff, but you know, if you're into that, you got to go through this man right here. So good luck. Cause he'll, he'll take you out. This guy is a warrior, man. This guy is like an Aztec warrior. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, his, his stature, you know, since way back in the WEC days, he was fighting at bantamweight way before he ever went to the, to the flyweight division. Cause they didn't have the flyweight division. Um, you know, and he was fighting guys like, I don't think you guys can see anything. I'm blocking you, but Dominic Cruz, uh, he was fighting a lot, a lot of, you know, big name bantamweight fighters and he was whooping those guys up too. You know, we take a look at his resume from back in the day. You know, let's see. Back in the WEC days, you know, taking out guys like Jeff Curran. If you don't remember him, stud of a fighter. Cruz he lost to, but this was a very close fight. The split decision loss. And Dominic Cruz was, the you know, the legend. Eddie Wineland. And these are real bantamweight fighters. He was undersized. And uh, he always showed up. Ian McCall. Ian McCall is a flyweight fighter. This, is, this isn't the flyweight division over here. But, um, you know, still taking out all the guys that they threw at him. Except for those title shots, right? Lost to Demetrius Johnson twice, but took out, you know, top fighters, Juicy A. Formiga, Ian McCall, Tim Elliott, Dustin Ortiz, John Moraga, Ali Bagotinov, Zach Makovsky, Henry Cejudo. Took out Henry Cejudo, man, Triple C. A lot of people think he's one of the GOATs nowadays, but let's not forget, he took out Triple C. It was a very close fight, too. If Henry Cejudo would have won that fight, whew, if he would have won that, and if he didn't lose to, uh, to Mighty Mouse the first time around, man, that resume would have been crazy, but... Mm, did lose to Sergio Pettis. That was a fight that he looked like he kind of mentally took off a little bit in there. I think that he could take Sergio Pettis out, but lost that split decision. I think he even said in some interviews that he was having a little bit of trouble, you know, finding the urgency to uh, to keep, you know, training and showing up for every fight. But then he, boom, bounced back, took out Alex Perez, Dustin Ortiz, Juicy Formiga, looked nasty in that fight. And then he gets another shot at, at wearing gold. And let me count this for you now. He, uh, he had a chance to... To hold gold, I but I don't know if this was a title fight. I forget if this for I don't I don't remember. But this was for gold. Had a chance to win gold there. Lost lost gold here. Lost for gold there. That's three times. Uh, lost for gold there. That's four times he's lost that he was aiming for for a title. And uh, if he loses this upcoming Saturday, there'll be five times he lost opportunities to hold gold, which is kind of crazy because it's been kind of the similar narrative of Uriah Faber, who's also, of course, the Team Alpha Male guy, the, the main Team Alpha Male head coach type dude. And uh, I'm a big fan of Faber, one of my favorite fighters of all time. But let's not forget, first and foremost, he was the reigning featherweight champion in WEC back in the day. And that was the place to be if you were a featherweight. The, the UFC didn't even have that division. But Faber constantly came up short in those in those UFC uh, title shots that he was given to. And that was the same thing with with uh, with Joseph here. So I'm rooting for Joseph. I hope Joseph can, can finally hold gold. But I got to go with Devis and Figueredo. I think Figueredo wins this fight, whether he, he gets an early stoppage again or if it just goes five rounds. I think his jiu-jitsu is nasty. His grappling, his striking. He has a, a really big fa frame for the weight class. Keep an eye on the weight cut. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the weight cut goes good for him. See him over here. He looks like he's in good shape. He looks ripped up. He knows he can't miss weight again. He has to make weight. Uh, you know, he has, if he wants to hold the gold, he has to make weight, and he can't do that again. Cool little picture here. So go fight here. And uh, I'm going to go with Figueredo. Like I said, I think Figueredo shows up, and uh, I think he, he wins the fight. He's about a 2-1 to one favorite right now, and I think that's reasonable. And, yeah, th those are my picks for the entire card. Like I said, man, I'm going to be posting this here now. Uh, Thursday afternoon and uh, hopefully you guys will check it out here by the end of the night and then I have MMA live discussion taking place 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time zone I got Mike Trezano it's gonna be hopping on the show I might have a, a special appearance for Michael Johnson's brother I don't know if that's gonna be this week or next week or whatnot I'm gonna touch base with him talking about a crazy brawl that he was throwing down with all this the Stockton boys uh, or the Diaz uh, you know people that supported Nate Diaz at, at the fight that took place in Orlando and uh, it was crazy. It was going down. Well, Nate Diaz was literally saying out of his mouth, Conor McGregor, you're taking everything I work for. That was literally, I'm right in front of me. I had it on my phone, just brawling out with like 10, 10 Diaz boys, the team represent. So, and, and Mike, Michael Johnson's brother does not play around. He was a big boy and he was throwing haymakers in there. You can find it on YouTube if you look it up. You can find, you can find that video. Um, but yeah, so I might have him come on the show. He might talk about that whole incident. 
And um, Michael Trezano, a uh, tough winner. A guy that I'm very much looking forward to seeing getting back in there soon. Let's see what's going on with him. And then we're going to talk more in detail upon this fight card here as well. Any questions you guys have, you guys know you can ask questions. And I'll be, I'll be live tonight, MMA live discussion. And I look forward to talking to you guys there. Please hit the like button on this video. It helps me with the algorithms. Hit that subscribe button. Check me out over on Instagram, MMA Fortune Teller underscore. Uh, you guys can always uh, shoot me a message over there if you guys are interested in my picks. I'm going to have at least two picks for this card that I feel great about. I told you one play is going to be a max unit play. So if you're interested in making some real money, watch how it goes down this fight card. I'm telling you guys. All right. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. I think that covers everything. Uh, at this point, I think there's only one thing we could do, and uh, that would be to sign out. So signing out, the teller. The MMA fortune, MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller.